Riley, my good sir, we did it. Uh, from the ACC tournament previews to talking ACC early in the season, we have made it. Uh, the ACC, the UNC is taking on the Wagner. And you know what? I actually forgot what their mascot is. I'm going to guess real quick, and I want you to correct me. Is it Sea Wolves? You're close. You got the first uh, the first syllable right. It's Seahawks. Mm, you know what? That's on me. Shout out to Dewan Anderson, former Mister uh, former Mister Basketball in the state of Michigan. Actually went to finish his career at Wagner after he played at Michigan State. That's why I know about Wagner. But Riley, first off, uh, how you doing tonight, Riley Davis of Heat Check CBB? By the way, how dare I? not introduce my guy like that that's on me it's been a while since we hopped on together so you just got to give me a moment oh. all good yeah we're we're doing well over here you know a little sleep deprived to be expected in this month i've been cranking out some nba draft coverage actually for heat check cbb teasing that for later this week um sorry my dog is acting up right now <laughs> is he i mean he's just he's just going through the madness that's all that is Sorry about that. Uh, and sorry to Greg, because you're probably going to have to edit that out or just leave it in. People, we, the people love the dogs. Uh, but anyway, yeah, man, it's a little sleep deprived, working on different previews, working on different content but at the same time. It's the best time of the year and it's so fun to do. And yeah, like who wouldn't want to to cover hoops? Yeah, I mean, also, your team is a number one seed. Like, let's not let's not forget that uh, you are a UNC Tar Heel fan. Your team is a number one seed in the tournament. And uh, obviously, they're taking on a 16 C. Wagner was able to defeat Howard in the play in for the 16 C, which they were an underdog in that game. A lot of people had Howard winning that basketball game. Uh, Howard made a valiant comeback at the end. Wagner was able to hold them off. So, you know, they're 1 0 technically in March coming into this game. But uh, l- let me get your initial feelings uh, on this game. Yeah. So, first off, I want to, I want to say, can, can I just be a little self-indulgent for a second and say it is so nice just reflecting how this time last year Carolina was fresh off declining an NIT bid, which they blazed the trail for a lot of these mid-teams to do the same. Uh, I got their little Pittsburgh slander in here. I've been too nice to Tristan Freeman recently. It is not good enough to uh, <laughs> to decline an NIT bid. I, I did not know that a Tristan Stray was going to come, but I'm all here for it. <laughs> but yeah, just comparing the the feelings and the emotions of last year to this year, being back on the one line, crazy that literally the last time Carolina wasn't a bubble team was 2019, also a one seed. I I still have a lot of belief in this Carolina team, even after they had a four showing against NC State. Uh, I believe it was Greg who said, sometimes it's the year after the year. And... Kind of want to break that phrase back out. Last year was supposed to be the year, the run it back redemption year, crashed and burn. Maybe they get back to the final four this year, and I think it starts with this game. Um, Wagner, I've, I've done a little bit of film study on Wagner, a little bit of breakdowns of how they play. I, I do want to give a, a stat shout out to Ryan Peters, who is uh, covers the NEC on Twitter. He's yeah, pretty dedicated to that that conference. So you got to give a shout out to those guys doing the nitty gritty work of the, at the low major level. He was citing how Wagner's top forty nationally in percentage of points scored and fa- on the fast break. Pretty interesting juxtaposition when you see they rank three hundred fifty seventh in tempo on Kimpom on offense, but it doesn't mean that they aren't opportunistic when when they get out on the break. That was essentially what Ryan was trying to the point he was trying to make when he covered that. So maybe in that sense they can be a little bit frisky. Uh, maybe they'll get some easy buckets in transition. But but as a whole, when you look at this team, they lack size on the perimeter. They lack size in the front court. That's uh, truly been a despite that stat about points on the fast break it's been a pretty ugly offense for most of the year i mean 332nd on kim palm it's a lot of red 43 percent from two-point range carolina has been an elite defensive team going back to december and i think that for this team they're probably going to come out wanting to make a point and i think they lock them up early pull and pull away early yeah, you know, I, I this this to me has all the makings of a let's stop playing around game just a little bit. Like not let's stop playing around, but you know, uh, I I don't want to use the embarrassing word because there's not there's nothing embarrassing about losing in the ACC championship game um, against a team that was playing well. But th- there is probably somewhat of a sour taste in the mouth that you weren't kind of able to just 
complete that last step to like really just solidify the great regular season that you had still had a great regular season. That's, that's, that's not to be argued. I don't think, but you know, there's always just that it's always probably going to poke at them and they weren't able to really get that done, but now they have to refocus. This is, you know, the real deal tournament here. And Riley, I, I've done a lot of these previews. Uh, I've done some previews with some 16 seeds for this. Um, I try to find something that a 16 seed can do anything, like whether it be, like you said, you pointed out the opportunistic on the fast break type thing, but I, I have to be truthful with the folks. Wagner is really, really bad, unfortunately. <laughs> I, they they are, folks. I'm sorry. Uh, congrats to them on beating Howard. Honestly, they, they I think they already went over their quota for what they wanted to do in March Madness. That was a great win. Uh, and all credit to them, all credit to their coach. But, I mean, you go through, uh, and, and I like going, you know, using surface level things before I really dive into it. So shout out to my guy, Evan Miyakawa. He has uh, the new game preview, like little tab, that which I love. The tail of the tape is one that I always go to first. Uh, Wagner, 292nd in the rankings when healthy, 330th offensively. 164th de uh, defensively, so it's not like god awful. They're not in the two hundreds or anything like that. But it's not they ain't they ain't top one fifty or anything like that. Yeah. Tempo three sixty, like you already pointed out. This team just doesn't really have the 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 guys to hang with this team. Um, they they don't have any player that has over a one uh defensive BPR um the even the offensive PBR the, a lot of negatives a lot of minuses it, it's just a really tough 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 roster tough team for Wagner yeah uh I think they did some good things in getting to this point but this is a game that North Carolina should somewhat just kind of assert their will I'm with you completely. I, I do think it was like, I think North Carolina would admit it was embarrassing the way they played against NC state. It did it like, yes, you can say NC state was quicker to loose balls and hustle plays, which throughout the season, UNC has thrived in those areas. So if you want to pin some of that on effort, uh, you can, but as a whole, I think Carolina would say this, they didn't execute the way that they, they normally have this season. Like you can't just blame it on effort NC state wanting it more. Uh, they, they got stagnant in the half court, especially when they went down six to eight points. Um, and I think they're going to want to come out with an, or quickly erase that sour taste in their mouth. And, you know, again, this is a UNC team, top five defense. They have sort of defied the, uh, the logic that Carolina teams are soft and don't want to play defense. They have won games in the mud, so to speak. Uh, there's actually, now that I think about it, one of the, the, the greatest propaganda artists uh, of our time, uh, a former Big Ten commentator who now works for a very conservative sports <laughs> news hybrid website used to always talk about how soft North Carolina was. Uh, let's say his name rhymes with Jan Jokic. You are wrong, Mr. Jokic. This Carolina team is tough. And, and even just looking again at this at Wagner's roster, they essentially played six guys in their win over Howard. I think Carolina's physicality wears them down <laughs> really by the start of the second half. Yeah, I, I I don't really see much that Wagner can do in this one, Um, whether it be Armando Baycott down low or the positional size on the wings. Um, So I'll, I'll, I'll ask you this question, Riley, before we get to the, predict the prediction, which I think we already know what's it going to be. Um, What's one thing you're looking to see from North Carolina just, you know, that has nothing to do with Wagner, but something you mm -hmm. want to see in this game from this team? Is it just them bouncing back and putting together some – some offensive rhythm is it other getting other guys involved like what do you need to see that's going to have you feeling good because you know this is just the first step in a long road of, of the tournament I know it seems like it goes quick but like it's a it's a long grueling thing and you, obviously you can't get to the second round unless you win the first one but what are you trying to see in this first game to get get the ball rolling yeah so the first thing I think of the last four really five games of the the regular or excuse me the the previous five games going into that nc state game where unc had a home win against nc state destroyed notre dame on senior night won in cameron destroyed florida state first round of the acc tournament and pulled away from a, a feisty pit team late, late in the second round hubert did a really great job managing his rotations i thought his lineups were really good um they had balance of shooting and defense we saw i i and you know i don't want to be overly critical i don't know what went into this decision making but even down the stretch in crut cl clint <laughs> crunch time against NC State, there were some lineups that featured Elliot Cadeau, Seth Trimble, Harrison Ingram, Jalen Withers, and Armando Baycott, which uh, is basically a one-out <laughs> four in offense. Like a bunch of a bunch keep, of non keep them, keep them on their toes with the one out four in. 
<laughs> like a bunch of non-shooters in the lineup. And we saw that with how the offense really struggled in the second half. I mean, they shot 28%. Um, maybe he was still trying to get a last look at something before the big dance starts. But at the same time, it's like, you know who the best players are at this point. You know who the best lineups are at this point. It's time to just roll with what you know. Um, that's the first thing. Second thing, I would love to see, speaking on that notion of shooting, um, Harrison Ingram has shot pretty poorly from three-point range over the past nine games. I think he's at like 20, 22% over UNC's last nine games. This is an opportunity for him to get right. I, I'd love to see him have like a three-for-five outing behind the arc to get some of that confidence back. Because, I mean, for the first half of the season, he was shooting – over 40% from three-point land. And they they need him desperately to make those shots. I think Cormac Ryan's always been a th streaky shooter throughout his career. He's going to have nights where he goes six for eight. He's going to have nights where he goes one for seven. You live with that, but you need that consistent ability to just knock down the, the spot-up jumpers from Harrison Ingram. Yeah, this is definitely going to be a game that if someone needs to get right, if someone needs to tweak some things with their game, no disrespect to Wagner, but this is something that North Carolina, I think, can work on things a little bit uh before we get to the prediction point riley i must say that uh i we have the, the best sports book offer for you folks out there listening the official sports book of sleepers media my bookie my bookie has everything you need from odds boosts expert predictions you can bet on anything anytime anywhere and we have a great offer for you a deposit bonus of up to a thousand dollars that's up to a thousand dollars all you have to do is use promo code sleepers and get your deposit bonus today. My bookie has everything you need, the lines, the props. It also has some $25,000 bracket contests that are going on right now. So if you want to bet on the March Madness, do it with my bookie, the official sports book of Sleepers Media. Riley, uh, the line that I am seeing on this game, actually there is no Vegas line as of right now. So I'm going to go with the Evan Miyakawa line who has it at... 23 and a half for this game which probably sounds about right um i i think that north carolina rolls in this game uh this could i think this could easily get out of hand this could be a 30 point north carolina win i i don't i don't see you stressing at all when this game and i don't want you to stress at all how do you see this one playing out I'm with you. I think the 25 to 30 range is about right. Uh, I'm just going to say the NEC is not going to have 16 seeds beat one seeds in back to back tournaments so Take that to the bank. Oh, that I I to, it totally slipped my mind that it was from the NEC last year in the 16 seed. Wow, the Giants. Fairly, if Fairly Dickinson used up all that luck, sorry Wagner. <laughs> I, I'm speaking this into existence. UNC wins this one um, convincingly. All right. Well, once this game is over, Riley and myself will be back on this channel to recap it and hopefully talking about some fun UNC moments. And not is it time to hit the panic button? <laughs> we'll see y'all next time. <laughs>